Hi everyone, welcome to another uncut video with Kira of the Eagle Institute. This video, which is gonna be a little bit longer than my normal ones, is about something that's really important, which is your regular habitual emotional set point. And the reason why I'm talking about this is that I see a pattern in a lot of people that I talk to and I've seen it in myself in my own life and I've been able to get out of this. I've actually been able to get out of it more than once. And that is when we have a set point that is in the negative zone. So perhaps we feel anxiety most of the time. We feel like stressed or um, running to stand still or maybe it's angry or irritated or just like you're being pushed like in so many directions you know what that may happen from time to time but if it's happening on a regular basis you need to get it through your head that this is not normal there is something wrong one of the causes of this and there's many is that busy and having a lot to do has become a status symbol. And you know, I even fall prey to this, even though I know better, that doing something feels better and we feel useful and we feel more valuable than we do if we're just doing something that appears that we're not doing something or getting something accomplished. And you know what? If you're busy and you're feeling joy and enthusiasm and passion and you feel uplifted and your life feels like it's amazing, then you're taking action, doing the right things in the right amount. But if that isn't you on a regular basis, like at least 80% plus of the time, then there's something wrong. Something that you really need to take a look at. And one of the biggest challenges that many people have is that they get caught up in the cycle of activity, 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 keep going, keep going, keep going, more, 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 stimulate, 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 stimulate. And whether that's activities, whether that's information coming at you, whether it's other people's demands on you that you haven't sorted through, if you're not in that zone where you're feeling mostly good about it, it's time to do something about it. Replenishing is a normal, natural, and necessary part of life. Let me repeat that. It's replenishing is a necessary part of life. If you look at stuff in nature, everything goes in cycles. And if you look at my surrender video, I, I talk about that in that video as well, that we are so good at the go, 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 go. And we forget about the cycles where we take a step back and we rejuvenate. So how do we see this in nature? Well, some of the examples are the seasons. So either you live in a place in the world where there's two seasons, like say wet season and dry season, or you live in a place where there's four seasons, where you go through starting with spring into summer, winter, or sorry, fall, and then winter. All of that's a cycle. Our light, day and nighttime, yes, depending on where you live in the world, those amounts may vary, but the cycle doesn't change. In, in the periods that we go through, we have periods of light and we have periods of darkness in over a year in pretty much equal amounts because they're necessary for life. Look at your breath. Look at a heartbeat. Look at your digestive cycle. Going in, letting go. Going in, letting go. So everything in life is that cycle of having an active period and a replenishment period. Even your sleep. So why is it that we're so resistant to it? Well, one, some of the big excuses I hear are, first of all, I've got responsibilities. I've got stuff that are people that are depending on me. And you know what? That is true. But one of the most important things I learned when I was younger, when I was a lifeguard, or learning to become a lifeguard, is that 
You can't save anybody else if you put yourself in danger. You can't save anybody if you're on the verge of drowning or you put yourself in a situation where you might be drowning. So what does that mean? Well, if you're a lifeguard, it means that you always make sure that you're coming from a place of safety, you're coming from a place of strength, and they teach you all the techniques to do that. But if you can't do that, you do not save the other person. I know it's harsh, but you need to let them drown if you can't help them safely. The reason why, they're gonna take you down too even if they're smaller than you, even if they're not as strong as you. And two people drown, two people die instead of one. And that's kind of sobering, that's kind of harsh. But what I see a lot of people in our society, we're actually at that point where we are one step away from having some really serious things happen. And you know, we see a lot of symptoms and it's just not necessary. Like if you see, you know, you're out of patience, if you feel, you know, oh gosh, I just need to keep going, or you've forgotten even why you're doing the things you're doing, you're just going, 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 take a break. You need to find the things that replenish you. You are supposed to feel happy in life. You are supposed to feel joyful. You are supposed to be enthusiastic and passionate. And the majority of the time come from that place. And if that's not happening, there's something wrong. It's time to take a step back and look at it. You should be doing things in your life that you love, that make you feel good. And the only reason you do them is because you feel good. There's no expected outcome. In fact, there's no, you know, nothing about it is because I'm going to be measured in any way. I have to perform in any way. And you know what? Um, if you look at real high performance people, even, you know, artists, all of them have some sort of thing that they do on the side, the ones that are able to sustain their performance that they're just not good at, you know, world famous actors paint or play in a band. And you ask them, are they good at it? And they laugh. They're not doing it to be good at it. They're doing it because it replenishes them. It's relaxing in that there's absolutely no expectation of being good at it. That's why they're doing it. And that gives them the juice, the energy, the fuel for all the other things that they're accomplishing in their lives. So, you're sitting here, okay, this is nice. You've just added to my stress. This isn't helping me at all. Well, you know what? We're gonna go through what some of the steps are here on, to get you going in the right direction and give you some resources that you can take this and do something about it and really make a commitment in the next year to give yourself the resources that you need to um, be at the top of your game in your life, even if your life isn't what you want it to be. The first step is having the resources and having that emotional and um, psychological energy to do something. And the first step is be willing to figure it out and to commit. Commit that you are worth it. Not only will you feel better by doing this, but it will give you better results in your life. Not only will you get better results, you'll probably find th that you're doing things that are more meaningful to you and that the things that you're doing may change. They might not. You might be doing things that you're absolutely in love with in your life, but um, you're just missing the replenish thing. And that can actually really take the joy away from things that you already love. And you're just not getting that enjoyment because it becomes another thing to do instead of, you know, I get to do it. I have to do it instead of I get to do it. So let's go through some different problems and some different solutions so you can start to work through this. The first problem that many people have in the way they define it is they feel bad and they don't even know that they should feel better. They've become so used to feeling anxiety, feeling stress, feeling burned out, feeling like they're running to stand still, feeling 
anxious, feeling angry, or just not even wanting to acknowledge where they feel, like avoiding anything, like doing anything so that they don't have to be still for a moment to feel myself. Is that you? Are you avoiding how you feel? Well, guess what? Dealing with that and acknowledging that is your first step. And you can feel comfortable and feel safe in doing that, knowing that once you've done that, it's the first step in making up your mind to feel better and to, to get over this and to get to some of those more positive states that are natural and you should have in your, your birthright. So feeling bad and taking actions that can have these feelings has become a habit for you. Is that a problem that you have? Many people do. I have too. Like I find myself, you know, I'm doing things that I've been doing for a long time. You know, and at one time I was really passionate about it. They felt good. They felt right. But then my life changed or my priorities changed or I just doing too much and there's not a fit anymore. So it's time to look at those things and make an adjustment. It's time to change the habits. And as you walk down a path of growth in your life, whether it's self-improvement or um, you know, your natural growth, we are meant to grow in life. What worked for you in the earlier part of the path isn't necessarily gonna continue to work for you as you go forward. So younger part of my life, like swimming was my absolute joy and passion and spent tons of hours doing it, like any excuse to be in the water. Um, now, do I like being in the water? Absolutely, but it doesn't bring me the joy and the passion that, you know, in the replenishment that it used to. Now I have other things that fill that. For me, one of my big ones is dance, but that's even starting to change and I'm starting to find new things that give me that replenishment. So make a commitment to change your habits. Great, so the next problem is, how do I change my habits? Well, you're gonna have to start paying attention and finding the things in your life that do replenish you, that do revitalize you, that give you that sense of aliveness and connection to yourself and passion and enthusiasm, or at least give you a sense of peace and um, you know anything that's in that positive range happiness, enjoyment, pleasure. Those are the things you're going for. So if it's been a long time since you felt that way, think back if you can, what was the thing that you were doing the last time you felt that way? And start with that. And if you can't even remember that, I can't, you know, then you're gonna have to start experimenting and just be open to having the answers and you will find them. You know, it might take some trial and error, a little bit of commitment, getting over some of the thought patterns that you might have and the excuses of why you can't do that. Which brings me to my next problem. I can't possibly do that. Now, I've been through this one myself. I felt like in order to, I had really high challenging responsibilities in my, my job, in my company. I felt like I had a lot of people that were really depending on me. And in reality, they were. That was a realistic responsibility. However, getting over that, I can't possibly do that, was essential in me having the capacity in order to give what I needed to those people in order for all of us to win. So ask yourself this question. Why don't you value yourself enough and your own well-being enough to invest in yourself, to invest in taking the time in finding what it is that really revitalizes you? Because your well-being is worth it. It's worth investing in. I go back to that example from the lifeguard. You know, making sure that you are safe on land, making sure that you're safe in whatever you're doing before you go and help other people. Because guess what? If you don't do that, you don't have anything to give anyways. If your tank keeps getting emptied and emptied and emptied, you don't have anything to give. 
and ask yourself this question. Who in your life is going to lose even more if you have nothing left to give besides you? You are enough. You are enough of a reason. But let's just say in order to get into this, you need a little bit extra convincing. So who is it in your life that's really depending on you to come through? What will happen if they can't depend on you because you haven't worked, you haven't put the effort and the work into it to find the things that replenish you? So when your tank is empty, you have all those negative emotions that we've talked about, like anxiety, stress, possibly anger, irritation, all of those things are going to come out on the other people around you in your life. Is that really what you want to give them? Wouldn't you rather give them enthusiasm and passion and joy and love and connection and, you know, feeling like you have more than enough? Ask yourself that. Which brings me to my next point. You are worth giving those things to yourself. You are absolutely worth having those things for yourself. And it is possible. It's not some crazy dream that other people are living. This is for you. And the more resistant you are to hearing me say this, the more you need it and the more you are ready. You are ready to do something about this and to really commit to yourself, to replenishing yourself. So what I've been teaching you in this video and going through is teaching you to connect with yourself to connect with your heart. And I call this your heart vision. So we have two kinds of logic. We have our brain logic, which is what we normally think of. It's, you know, this e minus this equals this equals this. You know, this is the math logic. Then we have this other logic that is our heart logic, our intuition. We have no idea how we know it, but we just know things. Has that ever happened to you? Well, that's your heart. When you're doing things that, you know, make you just feel that wonderful feeling, the connection, the connection to yourself, the connection to other people, that's your heart. And when you're doing things that are from that place, that is your heart's vision. And that's what we really, really want, not just for you, but for everyone around, but starting with you in this year is to make that commitment to set your goals, to set all the logic in your life, starting with the vision of what's really coming from your heart. What you need in your heart to feel enthusiastic and passionate and joyful and full of love so that you can give that to all the other responsibilities that you have in your life and all the other people that you connect with every day. So we've gone through a lot of stuff here. Hopefully this is some stuff for you to get started but it's definitely not the full journey. So if you want more help with this, we have lots of ways that you can get that. The first is uh, we're doing a series of live experiential workshops that are going to take you through the process of connecting with your heart. And this isn't gonna be logical stuff. This is gonna be like experiences and in your body. So that's why we're doing it as a workshop so that you can really connect. What is that thing for you right now? What is that thing for you that's going to make you feel nourished and feel plentiful so that you can express that into the rest of the things you're doing in your life? We also are going to be having webinars on this and if I get enough demand we'll be doing like a teleclass on this or you can do it through private coaching. Maybe you're too far away to work with me um, in one of my workshops or maybe you know you just want one-on-one -on -one private coaching. Happy to do that too. So check the links to see what's coming up on this topic on heart vision and, um, you know, use the links for, you know, whatever way you think you need to, to move this forward and to really commit to yourself and to your heart vision for this year. Doing something feels better and we feel useful and we feel more valuable than we do if we're just doing something that appears that we're not doing something or getting something accomplished. If you're busy and you're feeling joy and enthusiasm 
and passion, then you're taking action, doing the right things in the right amount. But if that isn't you on a regular basis, like at least 80% plus of the time, then there's something wrong. Something that you really need to take a look at.